If you have been following our summer Khalakhadi series, you would know that we have covered the whole trip, all 11 episodes of it. In this last episode of our series, we want to just recap and go back to some of the best moments of our trip and why. A few new anecdotes and observations we noticed after the fact. We hope you enjoy. Land sightings in the Khalakhari are pretty common. Land sightings during winter months and summer months do however differ. In summer it's much hotter and therefore midday the lions are often more lazy. On our first day in the park we were super excited to have spotted lions. These lions were clearly, clearly really hot. They weren't doing much, however, still beautiful to see. There was, however, a very interesting sighting of a female lion. At this point, it appeared still alive because you could see the chest moving. However, the eyes of this female appeared glazed over and it was really tricky to tell if she was dying or what was going on. We had many discussions and maybe a disagreement or two whether we believed or I believed or Carmen believed she was alive or not. I thought she was dead and I was proven wrong when I saw her um, tummy moving up and down um, in one of our videos. Watching her decompose without really being taken by any other predators or scavengers was quite interesting though for me because for the few days that we were at Tuerifiran we had driven past her numerous times and she remained untouched except for her eyes. So on our second day um, we came across this emaciated eland um, and it's something that comes and I have not seen very much in the park. Um, I mean eland itself is very very scarce unless you're in the Mabur side. And he was super thin. And um, anyway, we stopped, we took a couple of photographs and we continued um, towards uh, KK whereby we saw the lions again. Um, this was the hottest day um, that we experienced in the park. And um, we stuck around with the lions for about 40 minutes, um, you know, on that particular day. And then we decided to head off back to the camp because our kids were getting hot and they wanted to swim. Um, only to find later that afternoon that the lions did take down um, the airlant at one of the at the KK waterhole, and we were super bleak to have missed it. But um, yeah, the luck of the jaw. Yeah, unfortunately, this is how it goes. Sometimes you get lucky, and you just happen to be there at the right time, and then sometimes you're just not. It was still a pleasure, however, to watch the lions interact with each other and to take a walk and have a nibble and go and have some water and then play around with each other at the KK waterhole. So it was still a very pleasant experience. It was far better than them just sleeping in the shade, as we had seen earlier that morning. But it just goes to show, despite the heat, they still made a kill. I think this trip in particular, I had loads of fun with my Toyota Fortuna. Um, have had the car for just over a year and a half now and it's the first time I've experienced driving on roads um, as in bad condition as we did um, in Khalakhari this time around. Um, there are so many things that you need to kind of take into account when approaching these you know tough roads. Um, I gained a little bit of courage from a lot of the people in front of me um, with regards to the rivers that we went through. Um, Otherwise, I would have been way too scared to go through by myself. And obviously, you can't walk these rivers to see how deep they are, um, or the flooded roads. So I relied on the people in front of me just to gain, you know, a little bit of insight into, you know, how deep the kind of overflowed river was. Um, and it turned out being fine. I mean, it was pretty deep, but we were safe at the end of it. The corrugations that we encountered on this trip were some of the worst that I've ever been on. It was really, really hectic. 
um, people were picking up their number plates and pieces of their car at reception. Um, so that's how, <laughs> that's how at the time it was quite, uh, you know, it wasn't funny, but you know, in hindsight, it was quite hilarious to see how many cars were losing pieces and parts. Um, yeah, so it just goes to show that we need to be, you know, to be, be mindful on these roads, make sure that you do let down your tires. Um, it does decrease the corrugations at the end of the day. When traveling through thicker sand, um, I know it is really difficult to look out for rocks, um, you know, on the side of the road, but really try your best to not uh, go too near to the side of the road in case a rock does penetrate the side wall of your tire, in which case you completely lose the tire, you can't fix it, it is done. We've come across a couple of campers in the past um, that have had these issues with the sidewalls. So I'm always mindful or forever mindful when traveling on these roads. It is important that you check your tires and check your equipment um, during and after every trip. You never know what could have happened. Um, we were in a situation whereby at uh, Roy Pitts, I uh, saw there was a slow puncture in my tire and um, I needed to pump it up every, it was really slow, so it was every second day I needed to kind of top, top him up a little bit and it was literally going down to like 0.8, um, which was quite dangerous. So yeah, we needed to fix that when we got back to Cape Town. Um, that was one problem we encountered on this trip um, that we've just finished. Um, and also we went on a camping um, adventure um, in February with friends of ours and something told me please just look under the trailer and before making our way back home again we found out that the shock absorber housing was completely snapped off um, from the chassis of our trailer so I needed to get back um, and get that welded in so and that was obviously attributed towards you know, with the corrugations that have been counted. So please be really careful to, or please make sure that you check your equipment um, during and after any trip. Talking about adventure and equipment, now, now I'll never forget yeah. the car battery yeah. going dead whilst we were at a lion site and my husband having to jump start the car with a passerby's help. So in all our years um, traveling to the Khalahari, um, we had never experienced as many scorpions as we did this um, time around. There were numerous occasions um, at Nosob as well as Matamata that I had to move the scorpions out of our campsite. And um, what did I use? I think I used a scorpion and I uh, placed them safely away from us um, so that they can continue on their way. A scopi, for those of you that don't understand Afrikaans, is pan. a dustpan that you can clean dust with, but also lift things with. On our last day at Roy Pitts, while packing up, I decided to take off my tackies and put in a pair of slip slops because um, we were about to get in the car. The tent was nearly rolled up and all I needed to do was lift up our top, which was placed under the tent put it in the car and then off we go. Um, there was a thin tail scorpion that I moved off about three or four times and he kept coming back. The last time I moved away even further and I thought I was safe. Um, so as I folded the top up, I felt this really, really painful sting um, on the side of my foot and I knew what had happened instantaneously. Um, I made sure that it was in fact the thin tail scorpion that did sting me and not the thick tail, otherwise I would have been in trouble. It was really, really painful and it just goes to show that you can never be too complacent and you need to make sure that you've got clothes shoes on at all times. We have two really incredible memories from the Nosob camp. Um, we encountered one of the biggest storms that we have ever encountered um, in all our years of travel. Um, it was absolutely nuts. Um, if this storm had to hit in Cape Town, it would literally be on the news the next day. That's how bad we felt it was. No. In times like this, it is really important to not only look after yourself, but please bear in mind that 
there might be campers out there that are none the wiser and they might make a couple of mistakes by, say, for instance, leaving gazebas up where you know they're going to get shattered in the storm. So it is super important that we pay attention to around us, um, our surroundings, as well as obviously our own setup. It's now April, and I've just recently seen on Khalakhari sightings that there was another monstrous storm at Norsup, which caused a lot of road damage. Um, it's something to always remember when you are in those regions. You assume it's a desert and it doesn't rain much, but when it does rain, it can really flood, and it's worthwhile always just being prepared for that eventuality, especially in the summer months. Um, one of the consequences of the storm that we encountered was, um, you know, bringing campers together the next day, um, assessing all the damages that was caused overnight um, was, was pretty nice. We definitely made some new friends and met some really awesome campers, probably most especially at Norsop on this trip, but also at Mata Mata. Um, it's worth mentioning how grateful we are to make all these friends, especially for our kids. You know, our kids often play sport and play games at the campsite with many other fellow travelers and have made lifelong friends that they're still in contact with today. So it's really always good to stay in contact and make these friendships from afar. Our first morning at Roy Putz as for those of you who have seen, was probably one of our best ever days, certainly in the Kharakhari, but potentially ever in the bush. The experience of the two male lions and their interaction before they began their feast, as well as their interaction of the cubs with each other and with their mum and their playful mood was just such an epic highlight. We have been incredibly blessed to have had similar exceptional sightings in the Kruger National Park, but for sure in the Khalakhadi we've never seen anything like this. What was extraordinary about this sighting was um, how the interaction of the two male lions played out. It was fascinating how the Obviously, the main lion who made the kill waited by the kill for his brother to, to rock up. Um, as soon as he saw his brother, he got up and he approached his brother. And the, the amount of affection and brotherly love that she ch showed each other. And I think respect from the second lion um, over the fact that he was gifted a kill. This was the first time we've ever seen this kind of interaction between two male lions. And oh, I must say it was absolutely amazing. So after that, we left in such a high to find a few hundred meters down the road, the cubs playing in the mud and playing with the sticks and dive tackling each other and just being children, really. It was beautiful, beautiful to watch. Our kids absolutely loved it. And so did we. The 
Parshian's teeth. <laughs> We had a number of snake encounters on this trip, as well as listening to other campers tell us the stories of their experiences and those of their friends that they had also met on the trip. One such story came from Norsop while we were camping there. We had heard that during the summer months, there were quite a number of snake encounters at the premium campsites because there's just less movement and fewer people that move around and walk around through there. And there's a lot more bush. So one or two people actually asked to change their accommodation based on those snakes being in their campsite. Something else worth mentioning, in one of our videos, you may or may not have noticed where the lion was roaring. We saw it whilst we were editing the footage. There was actually a, a rather large Cape Cobra, out of focus, but in the background, moving about a bush whilst the lion was roaring. So I'll put that footage so that you can see it now. But it's amazing how when your eye is paying attention to one thing, you don't actually notice what's going on in the background. Our last afternoon at Roy Putz 
you know, after such an incredible day with the lions, we had that awesome encounter with the Cape Cobra at our A-frame. And it's interesting, when we were at Norsop, a few other campers had mentioned that some of the A-frames in Royputs have what they call resident snakes. And we kind of were like smiling, thinking, okay, well, you know, maybe there's one nearby or around. And we we had warned the kids before we even arrived to Norsop that there may be snakes around. And we actually did a walkabout to look to see if there were, was anything that we could see. So... By the time we saw this Cape Cobra, we had kind of figured that we just didn't have one near us. Uh, we clearly learned our lesson that they can easily, quickly come in from the side. And this one certainly did give us quite a fright and quite a sighting. Other stories we were told by other campers regarding Roy Putz was the resident jackal. Um, which they had nicknamed Fricky, and our kids had chosen to nickname Frickadal. And it was interesting to see him in the afternoon evenings hanging around in the distance, keeping an eye to see if anybody leaves anything about. Uh, one of the stories another camper told us, because we never had any experiences with Fricky, I think he was too busy with the male lions during the day, but one of the stories we were told was how campers had left eggs in the back of their trailer and having not closed the trailer Fricky had jumped into their trailer stole an 18 pack of eggs and ran away with it and how that particular camper still charged after the jackal to get the eggs back um, just a, a note they really do go for eggs so if you have any such things in your trailer or tent they will rip open your tent to get to it. They can smell it and sense it. So especially eggs, keep it in your car or keep it locked up. But, you know, wildlife sometimes becomes a bit too tame and they try their luck and you can get yourself into trouble. Over the past couple of weeks, we've uh, mentioned many, on many occasions, about our incredible sightings that we've seen. Um, what we haven't um, touched on was the evenings in camp. You know, whether we be in Tuerfjörn, Norsob, Matamata, or Roypertz, we had a ritual of getting in early, lighting a fire, enjoying the sunset, enjoying our time in camp, and just basking in the tranquility of where we were. There are advantages to every individual camp in the Kharakhadi and for the largest part, campers around you are incredibly friendly. Also, at Royputz, when we didn't really have anybody nearby, it was a different sense of complete peace and every evening brought us one thing that was equally amazing was the incredible sunsets and the sounds and the experiences of the day winding down you can't put that easily into words and you can watch a time lapse of one of our videos but it's so emotive when you're there the Khalakhadi in summer is harsh but between the sunrises sunsets sounds and stars it's all worth it.